Design see the advantages of laser, laser scanning. My name is Rick Hilton. I'm the 3D scanning specialist for Synergist, Tech, Synergist Technologies. Our two presenters today are Bruce Bodich, the plant sales manager for the U.S. East for Leica Geosystems, and Jim Swain, applications consultant from the manufacturing division of Synergist Technologies. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can enter them on the bottom right of your screen and we'll see they get addressed at the end of the presentation. A little background on the relationship between Synergist and Leica. We have been an Autodesk reseller for over 30 years and we were looking to expand our business. The natural fit would be something complementary to CAD and high definition scanning was it. We explored the various vendors and Leica quickly rose to the top with their superior accuracy and innovation in the scanning field. The fact that a few years ago they signed a corporate partnership with Autodesk validated our decision. Today, we will show you how high definition scanning and AutoCAD complement each other to deliver a level of depth and detail above anything we've had in the past. I would like to now turn the webinar over to Bruce and Jim. All right. Thanks, Rick. Appreciate it. Set up my screen here. Yep. We are now seeing your screen, Bruce. Okay. Well, good morning for uh, those of you who decided to attend. I, we appreciate it very much, and as Rick had said, and thanks, Rick, for uh, introducing and explaining the, uh, the synergist, no pun intended, <laughs> between our two companies. Um, I, myself, real quickly, I've been with Leica for 10, 11 years. Prior to that, I was a, uh, worked for a surveying engineering firm for 22 years where I used laser scanning in 1998, 1999, and I ran CAD departments, 2D, 3D, so I've been on this side of the fence. Um, my uh, segment that I kind of geared towards is more plant facility scanning, uh, but we can talk about some other things today. This is more of an overview for those of you that are on the line today. Um, you may have heard of scanning, may have used a scanner, you may even have a scanner yourselves. So some of this may seem a little redundant. I'm going to kind of give it the 10,000 foot overview of where we're at. Um, like at where we're at in regards to uh, globally, with our competitors, uh, we've got a lot of competitors and competition is good. Um, we definitely have the number one scanners shipped uh, in the world. We have the largest network by far. Uh, where we set, we've been around for a long time. And uh, some of the markets that I cater to a lot are, uh, if you can see these slides that come up, are like offshore, the refineries, oil and gas, um, a lot of the building construction that takes place. These are examples that were laser scanning here, this, this picture is a prime example of um, what you can do in different phases of construction. With regards that you could scan maybe all the conduit, uh, rebar, or uh, infrastructure that goes in before the slab is poured, so you have that all documented beforehand. A lot of chemical processing. Chemical plants lately are on the rise uh, with the uh, crude as low as it got. They're actually still buying and selling, but at a much cheaper rate, the crude to chemical plants. So a lot of these larger projects have, that have been shelved over the years are now uh, coming to fruition, and a lot of projects are coming up, uh, meaning plant expansions and so forth. So we're seeing a lot of that. Uh, substations, scan's great for. Uh, here's another example of a bridge abutment where the actual uh, side piece was scanned at one location in the abutments, and uh, braces were scanned at the site. Basically, we're put together for an exact fit up virtually from scan to scan. You can put those together so you know during a lift operation, which costs a lot of money and a lot of time, there's going to be no hiccups or issues during the field. Uh, we also, during uh, construction, or even if it's some existing steel that you have to verify, once it's scanned, you can click on it. It'll tell you what type of steel is there. It's a great way to validate uh, what is there or even check for verticality and different things like that. Stockpile use, it's fantastic for volume calculations. You can do facade drawings very, very quickly into CAD, and I'll talk about that. I'm going to go through these fairly quickly, and um, I'm going to talk about some of the um, and where laser scanning, if you have, haven't noticed or if you're curious and where it actually benefits, you're basically scanning a project millions of points very quickly and taking it from the job site in reality to the 3D data world and what you can do with it. And that's today what I want to talk about, all the various uses, because these laser scanners are really cool in what they can do, um, but it's really what you can do with the data. You may have one set 
a uh, project in mind that you want to maybe clash or interfere a design into the real world. And that's great once it's installed. But what you can do with the data there afterwards has a lot of value. Uh, just a little in brief about the, uh, the systems that we have and that Synergis has. Um, these actually scan at a 360 degree horizontal by a 290 degree now vertical field of view um, very quickly. And I'm talking probably on an average setting, it take you about two minutes to scan. Um, these are our three newest scanners, the P16, P30, and P40. As you can see below, really the, what they're differentiated between is the range. Um, now again, on the high end, the P40 offers a 270 meter range. A lot of that furthest use is used in either highway work or maybe a span bridge or a tower or something that's up above in a, in a large, tall building you just cannot reach. You have that ability to reach. Um, and then it's basically also some surveying functionality that's in the P40 that is not in the P16, meaning like there's traversing, resection routines that you can do. Uh, that's basically through the course of the setup and using it more like a total station if you're introducing survey control. Um, the P16 is a fantastic instrument uh, for, we call it shorter range, it's still you're talking about 135, 140 foot radius. When in most plants and facilities, and typically when you're scanning, you're picking up line of sight. So there's so much going on in a facility in this scenario that you'd have to move over maybe 10 feet, maybe 50 feet over to get something that's behind a pipe rack or some equipment. Um, so the P16 works really good for those. So that's just giving an overview on the three P series that we have. Um, the 16 I'd mentioned um, has a maximum radius of 45 meters. Um, these are all class one, which is top of the eye safety charts. Uh, we have been, with the new laser diode inside these, we've been getting an incredible clean data. And at 50 meters, you can see there the range noise is less than a millimeter, which is something when you're in the market of looking at laser scanner. You want something that is very, produces and acquires clean data, meaning nothing really fuzzy. Uh, the P30 and 40, again, a little more short to longer range applications, again, can be used in very close applications as well. That's more of your multi-use tool if you're a company that covers the full gamut. Basically, the data, once you're captured, if you're familiar, if you're not, it just captures it in millions and millions of points. And these points are in true X, Y, and Z coordinates. These coordinates can be input to any survey datum or drawing datum, whether it's just local datum that you want to use as well very easily. This picture here is on default how the data comes back. It's more of an intensity image. It's how the laser reflects off an image. You can see in the middle that it'll pick up welds. It actually picks up rust very well. We have companies that do uh, bridge inspections very quickly where rust will just stand out very um, pretty amazingly actually in the data that we're able to inspect. You can change the, it's just by a click of a button, you can change the data to view it in grayscale if you will. Or uh, add the color from the uh, camera. These scanners, all three of them have an onboard uh, camera with HDR capability as well. So you can take photos after the scan and you can apply the RGB value of the photos that it was taken to the actual points to give you a real vivid picture, which is a good idea. In this case, you know, you can see different lines that are colored differently. Um, and maybe sometimes if the user just didn't get quite enough data at the time at the project, you could always resort to the photos and, and use that as well. Once, uh, basically, what do we do with the data once it's acquired by any of the instruments? Like I mentioned, we have the P16, P30, P40. At the bottom left there is also a new, it's a total station. It's a one second reflectorless gun surveying instrument that has scanning capability. Now, I wouldn't use that to scan an entire facility because it is a slower capability, but it has its needs. Basically small change out areas, things like that. Um, but either way, um, any of the products, once they scan, we have a product called registration. You can automatically stitch the uh, setups together. There's a process you can use targets. We have a targetless registration. There's many different opportunities. Question about any of those, you're more than happy to uh, get a hold of us afterwards or answer, type in any questions like Rick had mentioned. We can help you with those for us. Um, really, once the data is gathered, uh, we have a product called TrueView Software. It's a web-based. Now we have one that's called TrueView Global. And you can open up this data. Uh, it's not any downloadable, but on any web browser. You can view it from a server, from the cloud. You can share it. It's a great way to uh, review 
do projects, even share it with a client, if you will. So it gives them some ability, and I'll show some examples of that to extract some dimensions. I'm not doing any fine engineering work, but it's a great review tool. We have our Cyclone software, which is called Cyclone Model. It's basically a conversion of the point cloud to model items. And there's a lot of tools in there. And also our CloudWorks software, and I'll talk about those. Those are plugins that fit inside AutoCAD, Revit, Navisworks, we have MicroStation, PDMS, different platforms. It enables you to bring in that point cloud data, because nowadays you can bring in a point cloud file um, of different, uh, different file type into AutoCAD and work with it, but it's, it can get sluggish after time. Uh, I'll talk about our new product called Jetstream. It's the fastest um, point cloud generation uh, tool right now in the market. Review, we mentioned that very briefly. We call, uh, once you get a data set together and uh, you would publish it to a TrueView, it's an HTML that the user would open. It could be your customer, it could be your colleagues. Uh, you could, again, like I'd mentioned, you can put notes in there. I can take dimensions on something. I'm hopping around and actually uh, flying through from one point to the next. Uh, it's a great review tool. You can add hyperlinks that would actually open up other CAD drawings or photographs of the equipment, whatever you want to add to that. Uh, it's a great tool. And TrueView is actually free. So if you hand it to uh, your owner operator, we're finding that the maintenance uh, crews love this rather than getting a lift or uh, hydraulic lift to measure some piping or bracing up above. They can actually uh, open this up in any browser and zoom to that area and take some quick measurements or some measurements that they need to replace something. Also, we have users that will take TrueView. They'll have a design, and they'll insert it into there. When you publish the TrueView, you'll see that design, which is shown here in red, uh, what it looks like in the real world. So maybe it gives the customer a true idea and feeling of what it is if things are just sort of fit well. Um, but it's done very, very easily. So just other ways to use TrueView. Cyclone model, uh, again, is our primary software. It's, we've got a lot that's offered in there, from steel member validation to it pulls out the steel uh, components and will validate it against tabled items. Same with piping, different piping tools. There's, uh, there's DTMs you can do for to find immediate high and low areas, or if you're doing flat work to find if there's any bathtub going on and doing some concrete work. You in equipment removal and installation pathing. So there's a lot inside of it. Um, but I'll just touch on a few things. Typically, like I mentioned earlier, it's, it's a good way to convert the point cloud to modeled items. Here, the picture on the left is where you can click onto a cylinder. It immediately will show you what size OD that cylinder is against any tabled item, and it'll be able to obtain that. It's a good way to validate existing drawings, or if you have no drawings at all and you're looking to install something. So you really want to validate and make sure that that uh, is the size it is. Um, it's done very easily. There's tools that will work on clearance tools. Again, this is just a snapshot of a highway. It works well in, in a plant and facility arena as well. Everything's perpendicular once you set up your uh, clearance tools. And that's just doing it against a DTM. A DTM is a mesh, if you would, of a surface. So it looks more of a triangulated area. A lot of companies are using it for uh, quick and accurate uh, verification of things right on the fly immediately if there's steel like you see here. Uh, they do five different types of steel, many different cylinders and components. Here's an example of a uh, uh, basically an alignment that is used in this case as a roadway scenario. Alignments can be cut, and these cut sections are done, and PDFs can be created and viewed. Again, this is more of a civil application. You can use it in a facility too if you want to say a certain bay or a certain column line, you can run it on a point cloud basis as well. See a lot of customers also using this for, um, this is very key in facilities with equipment placement. Uh, they want to know the bolt locations and they want to obviously match and make sure that's accurate before the equipment is lifted and it cause too much time to hold in place before uh, that has to be lifted and put in place. But we're finding, getting a lot of feedback from customers that are loving this. Uh, it's just a great way, another way to use the tool and the data. Or you can simply extract into 2D line work, if you wish, or 3D line work. There's a lot to do it. Here's just an example of taking reality, it's point cloud, model items. It all depends on what you do. And again, maybe the customer just wants to know that there's a 
making cut measurements. Uh, it's how you can use that data afterwards. If it's an owner operator, how you can own, turn that data over to them. And I'll discuss that in a few minutes about asset uh, facility and management, and how that data can be over to them and so forth. These are just examples of, actually, this was a rail car that was scanned with a scanner and then uh, converted to modeled object inside our program called Cyclone Model. Again, just different uses. Kind of flip through this. Here's a, uh, a part of a refinery that was done. We have a tool that you can actually window around a series of point clouds of pipes. In the last year, you can basically tell it model all the pipes. The next thing, there'll be a dialog box that comes up and says, okay, what minimum bore to maximum bore do you want to model? And it's a great way to convert, again, point cloud to modeled objects. And from there, you can drag and drop into your CAD platform. Some other examples. This is a facility. Assembly line at Automotive. Um, also, these snapshots, your one on the left, um, is examples where you can design directly in the data uh, if you want. So you can find openings where you can route a pipe or cable tray. One on the right is where you would drop in a design and then flash or interfere check against that design. You can tell it any, any distance outside of your design or inside of your design. You don't want to see that it's going to interfere with anything. So you know ahead of time to change up your design. Uh, just some ideas here. I'm not going to go through every single one, but for mechanical engineers, again, this is more in the facility, uh, in the facility space. Um, again, you're, you're validating different types of steel. You're doing clash detection. This kind of falls into the hands of mechanical engineers, pipers, and even the maintenance, like I mentioned earlier. The maintenance crews are loving this. It's, they don't need any set uh, software. Once you publish this data set, they can open up this data for their own use and virtually walk through the facility and measure different things for their own use without any given software. They can use any browser. And we have tank strapping calibration tools that are really great for calibrating uh, different types of oil tanks or different vessels, um, deviation monitoring, things for watching for movement. It could be anything from a dam wall to a retaining wall to even a tank or something that heat expansion. If we scan at one point, we scan at another, it's going to give you the deviation or of movement distance. Owner operators, this is great where you can roll it into. It's another great way to, to secure that relationship with an owner operator if you're doing work for them uh, or if you're an owner operator yourself. How to use this data. We're working with a lot of uh, key players in the, uh, actually in the automotive and oil, gas, and refinery arena than working for shutdowns. How to use this data for shutdown planning. Different things like that. Um, we've got some great stuff that's coming down the pipe unintended, but um, that's uh, going to help for shutdowns. Plant walkthroughs. We have nuclear customers that love to use this. Everything's gathered virtually in open virtual tray and plant you right through the data. Um, so there's a lot you can do. With these. Again, these are just ideas. Uh, talked about the plugins. These are our CloudWorks plugins. Again, you can see in the bottom right some of the uh, platforms that they, these will sit in. It allows you to give use the data. We give you a ribbon bar. With that, you can uh, extract center line of piping for P&ID work, uh, cylinders. There's clash detection tools in here. Again, you're right. You're bringing the data basically in AutoCAD. You're treating it like an XREF. And against that, you'll be able to use different your your normal old tools that you do with your tools and your XREF across the whole plant. And again, Jim will kind of dive in on some of that in a second. Um, again, just to some more information on this. Uh, Check, clash checking against a design. You don't even have to do, a lot of companies will think, well, hey, I've got a 3D scanner I can do, I have to do 3D modeling. That's not the case. Uh, 2D plans and extractions, whether it's a cut drawing for a fab shop, can be extracted immediately and very, very quickly. And so it just, it helps. Uh, and these are some example snapshots of uh, data directly in CAD. And here's just taking a slice of data on a column line. And then it's just simply using, like in this case, it was an AutoCAD, using uh, the linear tools, the dimensioning tools, and snapping from node to node because it treats it as a node if you were AutoCAD. And they're just printing out a quick PDF if it's something that's a quick and dirty drawing that they need for that. And also you can extract different points if it's just elevations or X, Y, and Z that you want to extract and work with. 
intermediate 2D and or 3D drawing of data. And again, it's like an XREF. You just turn the points on and off. Jetstream, I had mentioned, it's um, our new engine. It's the fastest engine on the market right now. We basically looked at this and all these scanners are getting faster. They're collecting more data. Um, everybody wants more data and they're getting huge. Jetstream, we built it based, it was based to use and pull the data from the cloud. Um, what it's doing is when you have a, a say a registered data set of, from a scanner, you have the option, again Jetstream is an option, to generate or what we call push this data to a project vault. Now the project vault you deem where you want it to live. It could be on your laptop if you want. It's meant and built to run from a server. Um, also the cloud as well. We have companies that are using virtual servers. Um, what it's doing is it you still contains all the data, but it's it's basically a gaming engine. Is what it is. But the beauty about it is that we're finding that you're getting uh, six to eight times faster because there is no regen time. Again, you're writing AutoCAD, but using Jetstream, there is no. So if you zoom out from a, like a Google View, for instance, on a site, and zoom right into maybe a valve or a bolt, there is no regen time whatsoever. So basically, there's no wait. Like it says at the bottom, you get all the points all the time. It's nice. Also, the overall file size gets reduced up to 40%, uh, but it's incredibly fast. Um, so this is, if you hear anything about Jetstream, that's used with our, again, our CloudWorks plugins. 3D Reshaper, real quickly, I talked about calibration tank routine. Uh, you can do deviation reporting against movement, things that don't actually scan like a part, for instance, on the bottom right-hand corner. Has it met the needs of the actual CAD file? What do they need to change? These are just other tools, too, that we use. So really, in a nutshell, it's just gathering, and it's all depending on what you want to mine out of the data, what we like to call. Once you collect the data, that's the beauty of it. You always can go back to it. You can update your clouds if you update uh, as-built drawings very, very quickly. Um, there's tools that we have in that to see what has changed. So if you scan today, you go back two, three weeks from now, and you scan again, there's little tools and, and that we have that will actually call out or point to things that are maybe tough to notice by eye that you can tell what has changed. Um, so it's just a good way to uh, keep updated drawings as well. Just a quick brief rundown on clash detection. What I mean about that is here's a, an example of a postal system that was scanned and a lot of the mobile cards were taken out of the data. And it's mainly these columns that you see in magenta that are, are hard and they, they need to stay. They cannot move. And this was a company that was putting in a large CAD, uh, system, automated uh, postal system. So you can see this was a CAD file that was dropped inside the point cloud file. And they wanted to see if any interferences would take place. So you would, put, you would select a particular component, or the whole drawing itself, the CAD file, and you would give it any given clearance. So in this case, I believe it was a one foot clearance. Basically, show me anything that's going to hit out there in the real world so they know to change it ahead of time. Again, these are just large envelopes in a CAD file that they know what they can flash against. But you can see in red that it calls out areas of concern. This conveyor there that's going to be cutting through a big control panel. Like that. So these are just ideas I wanted to give you. Here's another quick example. Um, the green is actually existing. And the silver is some proposed design or piping. May have already dealt with this, um, so forgive me if it's kind of redundant for you. I just want to give some examples of the data. Again, designing directly in it. Here's a pointing to an area that the pipe is actually going to be removed. And then uh, this is a good case where they designed above electrical tray. You can see near the top, and you can virtually design in the plant if you would, or run clash detection. Obviously, there's an area that's not going to work. Definitely not going to work. <laughs> so again, these are just examples of what we call clash or interference. Um, safety basically is number one, mainly with owner operators, but anybody. Um, again, your eye safe. Um, if you can see it, these will capture it, and then you can go in on depending on our uh, your applications. You can we have a live video feed on our uh, scanners. You can zoom in on something and just pick a small particular area if you would, and, and Oh, the scanner, you want this many points, what we call resolution setting. So again, you can just remove that. Um, but safety is number one. Um, obviously, you can see through here the cost reduction. Um, 
getting accurate 3D as built documentation very fast um, for quicker startup projects. And fabrication. I've had a lot of customers lately who are doing design, uh, build, and install. So they want to make sure when they're designing this, their equipment, they will basically compare it to the CAD file to make sure that it's going to meet the needs. And I'll also scan the site to make sure that it will fit into the site. What they do is once it's installed, then they'll do an accurate cost assessment to get started as well. Some other ideas of asset management that's used for operating facilities. Once this data is collected, again, it can be used for engineering purposes, but afterwards, we're seeing more owner operators that are gathering this for themselves to complete their plant or a section of their plant. This point cloud is constantly being updated. And as we know that these plants are living and breathing, they're every day, they're always moving, there's something changing. But you can begin to add intelligence to this point cloud. Um, and all this will tie into your different shut down work processes, um, scheduling processes. Um, so a lot of this can be integrated. At the bottom, I mentioned uh, there's a spot there, virtual reality training. I talked about it earlier. We have a lot of our nuclear customers like to do that. We're seeing more and more in the uh, chemical facilities as well. When they need to virtually take somebody to the plant, if it's what we call a hot area, uh, area that uh, they cannot enter, they want to take them there. So these are just some um, sub-markets within the plants and facilities. There's just a small list of them. Of our options, and, I, and again, if, if any of you afterwards are interested in, in having some of these slides, I'd be more than happy to set this up and give it to you. There's just so much to go through. Um, but these are just options, give you ideas to use it. Uh, you may have one thing in mind um, that a certain project needs to be, and we want to be able to take those horse blinders off and see other value to the data um, that can uh, bring to you and your customers. Again, a lot of your customers that get this, obviously, safety is huge. But mainly, the first ROI that is noticed, it reduces your site trips. Years ago, I noticed that, even before scanning, I would myself go out, send my crews out to the site, whether it's a, I don't care whether it's doing a parking lot survey or, or working on an offshore oil platform. It's just gathering the data, and majority of the time, we had to go back. Either something was forgot, or the scope changes, that happens quite a bit. Um, so your first ROI out of the gate is definitely your revisits to the site. Also, your time reduced in as building the site is reduced immensely, and the data that you can take out of it. Because all this data can be, uh, again, tied to any survey data very, very easily in the field or even back in house. These, again, are just some more benefits that you can see. We have many, many case studies, too, that um, many, many case studies that are done for different. Um, market applications. So if it's something that in your market uh, you're interested in, then um, we definitely, um, we can definitely get some case studies that fall into your market. Hey Jim or anybody, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, I just got a, can you see the screens? I just got a message that I lost connection. No, I still see the screen. You're on the case uh, okay. study, Texaco. Okay, good, good. I'm just about ready to wrap it up. Um, I've got a lot of different, like I mentioned, case studies. This is just kind of a, it gives you a good feel of, of how things are used. Um, here's an a, a interesting one. This was done actually about eight years ago, but it's still, again, an application that's used even today. Um, they scanned uh, this module. You can see in the right-hand corner, these are large. It's for a refinery. These things are built in modules, and then they're shipped on a barge and shipped to the location. Uh, what they needed it, they wanted to do is they know that there's key tie points where this has to be uh, installed, but they also know that there's going to be lift and clash problems, and they just want to call out. There's obvious ones, and there's ones that they were not able to see. And in this case, these loops, they knew when they dropped it in place, so that piping would actually hit the existing um, if it was a rack that it was being dropped into. What they did was, here's the, matter of fact, the area that they're going to drop it into at the refinery. And what they did, they took two days, one day at the fab site, and they scanned some different modules, and then another day at the actual location of the refinery. 
and they virtually put the two together, so we call it a cloud-to-cloud -cloud clash analysis, finding areas that, you know, so there might be areas that it's it called soft clash, things that they can actually manipulate in the field during the lift, or hard clash that they really need to change something before that fab leaves the dock. And uh, they, they found quite a few clashes that they would have normally not have caught in. I love this, this um, on the bottom, this quote. He said that, uh, that the total cost of the site scanning deliverables was less than the scaffolding would have been. It's basically, they were going to rent and use some scaffolding, erect the scaffolding to start measuring things by hand throughout the, where the, uh, the design was going to be dropped in place. So to wrap things up, again, I mean, we could go on and on. There's so much uses of the data when you capture it, whatever your application may be. It might be uh, civil, it might be an architectural application. We have forensics, law enforcement that use this. I myself work in the facility and plant arena, and there's many uses just within that. So whether it's a greenfield or brownfield application, just want to and mention that it will definitely benefit the ROIs. I talked about some of that. We have more that I can talk about and give you later on afterwards. Um, but out of the gate, you're just getting more accurate results. And uh, it's just it's how to use the data and how to benefit yourselves and even your customers afterwards. With that being said, I'm going to roll it back over to Jim. And uh, he's going to discuss how these different applications can be done with the Autodesk uh, modules themselves. I want to thank everybody right, thank again you. for taking time. Appreciate it. All right. So once again, my name is Jim Swain, and I am an application consultant with Synergist Technologies. I've been with Synergist for about 19 years now, but before that, I was a design engineer at a small uh, consumer electronics company where we didn't know what it was called then. We practiced a lot of agile manufacturing, so we were doing small runs and frequent changes to our production facilities. Uh, it seems sometimes it was on a weekly basis in certain areas. So I found through my career here that there's a lot of software I would have killed to have back then when I was actually uh, looking to apply it. So as Bruce pointed out, um, if you're working with a brand new fresh facility, you've got the uh, goal, you, I'm sorry, you've got usage available for point cloud in terms of survey information. And then also going back in construction verification. Uh, here's what we told of the general contractors build. Is this actually what it is, uh, what we got as a result? Are we dead on, are we off by an inch here or there, or so on? Because it could make a difference later on. I don't know if anybody else has had the unfortunate experience of having to knock a hole in the wall to get a piece of equipment in because it just didn't fit the way that we had hoped it would originally. Brownfield designs, pretty much the same thing, but since you're bringing it into an existing uh, environment, it's something that you need to worry about even more about what your access is going to be. Can you get the trucks, the, the uh, equipment into the facility, uh, what's the rest of the environment vertically as well as horizontally uh, looking like around you, and then again, construction verification. And the ones that I worked with directly myself, the, the retrofits, because we were working inside an existing plant. So taking a look at what things are like when we get there, and, and Bruce did an excellent job of pointing out all of those. But also, one that when you're making the pitch for the new line, the visualization, uh, that the old picture's worth a thousand words, it was definitely worth weeks in the sign-off process. Oh, this is what you're planning, and this is where things are. And yes, you've already noticed that there's this pipe running overhead that you're going to have to account for. Oh, good, you already have a plan for it. That type of thing would have uh, been beautiful for streamlining uh, my earlier life. Uh, and then once things are put in place, was it put where you expected to? Bruce pointed out the uh, double checking where your mounting bolts are, uh, getting them in the right place before you come in and lift in the piece of equipment. And sometimes when you're dealing with equipment that's not quite that bad, big or a little more mobile than you had planned, uh, did they really put it where you thought they put it? So equipment installation and then verification. What I'm going to be doing here is not uh, relying on the PowerPoints, I'm going to go over and kick over to the uh, Autodesk Factory Design Suite, the Ultimate Edition, 
and take a look at some places within both Inventor, the 3D design package part of it, and also Navisworks, the, the managed level of that, to take a look at class, clash detections, and also take a look at the um, timeline type of functionality that you can have with, in Navisworks. So what I'd like to do here is step away from the PowerPoint for a minute and bring up just a, a quick overview. Uh, I promise not to do uh, nothing but videos. That's not my goal here. But just want to make sure that people have an idea of what the capability is of Factory Design Suite. Because here we have the classic 2D AutoCAD drawing of some facility. And using Factory Design Suite, I can start my virtual design, uh, tracing out where a conveyor line is going to be, dropping in uh, different types of conveyors from what's called an asset library. And uh, adjusting, working with, starting from the 2D world. What I really, really appreciate about that, and I'm going to fast forward this a little bit, like I said, I'm not going to do death by video, death by PowerPoint in here, is you hit a button called sync, and as you might imagine, it will sync up a 3D model based on the same assets, based on that same information as the 2D world, to then bring it over into the 3D inventor. And as you make changes here in the 3D world, notice here's an area where the, um, the walkover just wasn't designed uh, with enough vertical clearance, not something that you would easily pick up in the 2D world, easy to notice, easy to fix in the 3D world that the uh, changes are picked up and populated throughout the design in the 3D world. What's not shown here is that I can sync it back to the 2D world and update those AutoCAD drawings at the same time as well. And here, swapping out one piece of that conveyor for a, another, for a, a diverter. I want to point out that kind of snap-in-place functionality that these uh, conveyor sections have because the assets coming into the uh, 3D world have what are called connectors defined for them. That's how things know to uh, locate where they are supposed to be with relation to the others. Works especially well for items like the conveyors and such where you're chaining them together, building a, a full sequence. And here you can see the newly updated information back in the 2D world. So with that, no, I take that back. I'm going to let this play for just about another 30 seconds uh, because here we've got something that's a 3D design that is going to be turned into an asset. Not a very complicated process. You essentially tell it where the floor is because you already have your 3D design and then add connector points. And the reason why I'm mentioning this here is the same process can be done with a point cloud. So here I will pause that and kick back over to my own uh, inventor session. So here I've got a, let me kick back over to the right one. Here I've got a 3D proposed uh, design for a packaging station. Uh, the wrapper put the, uh, the clear uh, wrap around a pallet load of, of product. And what I might want to do is take a look and see how I can work with this from a material handling point of view after the fact. Well, I may not want to take the time to actually model the forklift itself. So what I can do is create an asset from a scan and access that directly inside the inventor world. So I can place that. Uh, tell that I'd like to go ahead and spin that. go. So that might be an example of a piece of existing equipment. It's been in the factory since the dawn of time. You know you don't have uh, accurate 2D drawings for it, let alone 3D drawings for it. Go ahead and run the scan, make that into an asset. Then I can go ahead and work with it throughout and incorporate that in my 3D CAD model. Once it's there, I can certainly ask, uh, access it for things like uh, measuring distances and such to pieces of equipment. 
So you can see once from a straight line distance from the plane, it recognized the plane off of the point cloud directly, and then over to an existing spot on my 3D design. So one of the first uses I would have gotten out of this would have been scanning existing equipment that we'd had forever and using that to bring into my piece so I didn't have to spend the time to do the 3D modeling. I'm modeling what's going to be connecting up to it from there. I'll close out this file. Here's that same wrapper station, if you will, that's now been brought into an existing factory. And here's the second place that I would have loved to have been able to use a point cloud in my previous life. As you can see, I'm orbiting around an existing uh, facility, was not modeled yet, didn't need to take the time for it. I was able to just bring it into the inventor world, attach it as an external reference type of uh, attachment, as Bruce mentioned earlier, and see where my design will work with this in reality. Now, the other package that I talked about, and I'll go back to my PowerPoint for just a minute. In fact, I'll go ahead and close out the inventor just to uh, leave a little more space on my screen. Whoops, sorry, that's the video again. Is Navisworks. So I'll go ahead and fire up Navisworks. And what Navisworks brings to the table is many different things. And actually, having phrased it that way, that is almost a very bad pun for uh, those that know me, especially Rick. He's probably used to that by now. But Navisworks allows me to bring in information from many, many different systems. So I can go and bring in information from anything from uh, just a uh, very unintelligent laser scan, much higher precision laser scan, and then, uh, sorry, Autodesk models for the architectural, whether it's coming from uh, AutoCAD or coming from Revit, as well as my equipment, whether it's coming from Inventor or from any of the other uh, softwares that are out there, or even just a neutral file format. I can bring those together to work as a, uh, an overall design where I can do things such as uh, walkthroughs, fly-throughs, uh, animations of the uh, progress of a design. So here I've got one that's starting with just the exterior. And then I can go and, as I said before, I can go and say I'm going to append in, and here I'll just do it as a fast shot through other existing uh, Navisworks files. What's happened is at some point I've opened it up into Navisworks and saved it, so it, it bakes it into a much more uh, lighter weight file. And you can picture these uh, individual items down here. The, this is a uh, design for uh, front-end uh, earth moving equipment. And just in the uh, 3D CAD world, those models are huge, but here I'm able to work very quickly and very easily through the system. Also want to point out that I can go and work with a 4D type of representation. So if I open up a different piece, uh, there we go. So here's a, no, not going to save that. And of course, of doing something in front of an audience, you get a, an interesting shot at a error message that you hadn't expected. And that's, that's the way life goes in front of an audience. So, OK. Love the way it can do that on something that I had open last night. Anyway. So what I could be doing would be showing a uh, design and over the course of time have it tie into uh, the, uh, excuse me, loss of words for a second, tie into something like Microsoft Project or Excel 
and have that keep track of when different operations are taking place. So as I would go through it then, I would be able to go and uh, take a look at the, uh, at the results. Oh, excuse me a second, so I just want to make sure I'm opening up the right file. Yes, I got myself a little bit off track there. So let's take a look at uh, how that wrapping station might work then in that scan of the, of the full system. So here we brought in that wrapping station into that scan of the existing facility. And I can run a clash detection on this tell it the information I want to compare, compare, go ahead and run. Different settings there, as, as Bruce mentioned, and let's shrink this window down a little bit. Thank you. Uh, as Bruce mentioned, you can set up the, uh, the parameters for what type of clearance would you like to allow. Now here you can see that as that uh, wrapping arm swings around, clearance is not really an option. It's more of a, a dead hit. So within Navisworks, go and pull that down out of the way. I could go and grab this piece. Just move in here a little bit. And there's that CAD geometry. And what I'm going to do is select everything that uh, looks like that type of piece. So we'll go ahead and grab select same, grab all my CAD geometry. I'd like to go ahead and see about giving that a, a move just to try and uh, apply some clearance. How much do I really need to kick this? I can do what if studies without having to go back to my scan, without having to go back to my original CAD, uh, but I can spend some time right here and do it. Both the other routes are possible. But let's just see what would happen if I go and kick this over maybe three foot to, to see. Having done that, I can now go back, rerun my class detection, which was just off the screen. There we go. Rerun the test and see how I did for, for clearing it. And notice that that clash has now been resolved. So the basic uh, flow that I'm looking at here, bring back to the uh, slideshow here. There we go. Is I can use my point cloud for creating my assets for equipment that I don't have information for, bring it in, be able to use it within my inventor uh, design, within the factory design. I can then go and check and uh, present for really for the benefit of everybody, work through the design, work through the various uh, participants in the design and design review process. Uh, a little quick overview again of what Navisworks offers, real-time navigation. As you saw, I can do a walkthrough through it, a, uh, a fly-through as well. Um, and if you'd like to see more on that, please uh, contact us. Be glad to show more along those lines. Be able to aggregate data from many different file types. Uh, 5D scheduling, uh, the 4D time being the fourth one, but I can also take a look at my project schedule with respect to uh, outlay of resources. And then coordination, again, clash detection, inter interference checking, but and also quantity takeoff. So just as a, a recap, and we'll go to uh, ask, answering questions, um, I'd like you to think about Point clouds with respect to doing a factory design at the front end to allow you to find out what your existing conditions are, allow you to build your assets you need to make your design. Check at that point for already existing uh, close tolerances. I know I say clash there, but again, as Bruce pointed out, think of it in terms of close clearance rather than clash. And then at the back end, use it for verif verifying your design, or things placed where you thought they were. If you still have uh, sufficient clearances, what are the actual pieces? Go ahead and measure, create red line uh, 
documentation for where things are going to be an issue to see what needs to be resolved. So with that, uh, Rick, do we have any uh, questions? Jim, yeah, I do see one question. I'm going to let Bruce handle this question. Um, oh, did Bruce already answer the question online? Yeah, I've answered a couple questions. Uh, All right. Oh, good. One about the cold temps. I believe that was to Lori. I can't quite get to my question for some reason. It's very minimal. Yeah, it's kind of hidden on it. Yeah. Um, and uh, he was asking very cold temps. I mean, extremely cold temps. We did recently expand our oper operating temperature range with a firmware update, which has been nice. Um, he was saying from negative 20 to negative 40, we can go to negative 28. I have had customers actually do that below. Um, they were pushing the boundary out quite a ways. I mean, down around negative 40, close to negative 50 temps. Corps of Engineers, it got really cold. We do offer jackets for these. Um, I had mentioned in the in my response, we offer jackets for them. What it does is it, um, when the when the laser scanner uh, scans, it actually the laser pump produces a heat internal heat, um, and it contains that heat inside. So depending, but also these uh, units in this case that Corey was talking about in the for ice cream in these blast freezers, um, we can you can run these instruments. Uh, your phone, your iPhone or iPad, they're wireless. So there's too much Wi-Fi going on, you can actually connect to this. So if that being said, you could put it in the freezer, step outside, and we have quite a range, but you can run them from your phone to gather the data. The, again, the, the data typically on average, if it's the data to scan, will probably run you right around two minutes to scan. If you want uh, photographs, that will take additional time, um, but it's not too bad. So again, if it's just data, you can do it extremely fast, get in and get out. Um, we've had some cases where if it gets too cold, um, obviously, I mean, negative 40, that's cold. <laughs> but it gets to a point where it just doesn't matter anymore. But where, um, <coughs> excuse me, where the um, user would, uh, could, if they got six or eight scans, they need to continue scanning. And we found that if it had slowed down, bringing it into the warmth a little bit helps it's just very short time and getting back in there again but it does a great job it really does and even on the other end of the spectrum in heat I've actually scanned in steel plants and smelter plants um, glass factories where it's you just couldn't even hardly stand it was so hot and uh, we went in there and scanned even in coke ovens and refineries where I had to monitor the brick liner in these uh, ovens it's uh, great you can do it right during operation so I uh, know these are all good questions I do see another one that doesn't look like it was answered online, and it was about, uh, I was also curious about um, high humidity, how those scanners work in a high, high humidity environment. That was just submitted at, uh, two minutes ago. That's also from Corey. Oh, okay. Um, good question, Corey. It, um, we have an IP rating of 54. Um, you pretty much won't find that out of any other manufacturers. Uh, IP, IP 54 is the same. Um, environmental rating that we put on our high-end total stations we use out in any conditions what it means is basically uh, dust proof and waterproof um, again they're not submergible underwater but um, we have a video a matter of fact when we came out with our new series our product manager uh, was scanning in the rain um, we even was standing on the bed of his truck with a garden hose and was dousing the scanner while it was scanning with with water it's crazy we showed the data immediately afterwards because anything, if it's like a heavy snow or a rain, these fat, these scanners are so fast nowadays, they will pick that up. Um, but with the new laser diode, there was no noise is what we call it. Otherwise, with any other scanner, you're going to see a lot of, like, like a bee's nest or a lot of points or noise, as we call it, uh, if it was a heavy rain. Um, I've got customers that are down in the Gulf, uh, a lot of oil, offshore uh, oil platforms, refineries, there's a lot of humidity. And um, these do fantastic. Again, the IP rating is huge for that. Um, so no, the answer to the question is IP rating humidity. All right. Well, if there are any other questions, here is contact information for Rick. And you can certainly uh, take any uh, questions. And if you can't answer it, uh, send them to either Bruce or myself. 
and uh, we'll get back to you as, as soon as we uh, possibly can there. Uh, I would like to also point out that coming up on June 1st, Synergis is once again hosting our Synergis University uh, Day of uh, Learning Experience. It'll be at the Sands Ho uh, Hotel, the hotel, not the casino, it's right next door, up in Bethlehem. And uh, it's an all-day event with various training classes available, including uh, Inventor and uh, uh, Rick. I'm drawing a blank on other classes that we have right now. I'm focused on the one that I need to prepare for that. So uh, yeah, any closing comments, Rick? Yeah, with Synergis University, you've got two different tracks to run. We have a manufacturing track, which will hit everything that Autodesk does on the manufacturing side. We have a civil survey side, which is more geared towards civil 3D and those applications. We also have a lot of information on plain AutoCAD, what's new in the newer stuff. There are actually two sessions on HDS scanning, which will be hosted by Bruce and one of his, uh, one of his coworkers. Um, one is going to be on the factory side, which is kind of what Bruce reviewed now, but the other is going to be on civil survey side. And the other thing is we're also going to have all the subject matter experts there on site so you can get a lot of one-on-one -on -one face time with everybody. All right. Well, thank you, Rick. Uh, Bruce, any closing comments or, uh, or no, if not? No, closing we'll comments um, to uh, Corey, John, and Juanita that are still, looks like still online. Um, I don't know if any of you are planning on attending the SPAR conference uh, next week. If you haven't heard of it, SPAR is basically a annual event or conference, anything and everything to do with laser scanning is out there. Um, all the manufacturers, the latest software, uh, it's a great place to go. If you have heard of this and you have wanted to go, uh, I will be there. I'll be at the Leica booth. And um, we also have, like I said, I'll be at the uh, University event first. And we also have a uh, Hexagon conference that we have hold every year. I believe that is the second week of June, I can't remember quite yet, but uh, that's uh, where we have, um, again, we are um, by Hexagon, it's the world's largest leading manufacturer. We have um, all of our all of our um, tools and toys out there, so it's a great event. But if not, I do want to thank everybody for attending. Um, there's so much to go on. We can definitely take this offline and talk further about your business and just ideas and what you can do, or maybe you're already using Scan. How things can help. So I want to thank you again. All right. Well, with that, I will close the uh, webinar. Thank you again for uh, your attendance.